In this video, we're going to be looking at acid-base reactions. And what you'll realize is that acid-base reactions are extremely similar to your precipitation reactions that we looked at in the previous video. But before we actually learn how to write these acid-base reactions, we first need to go over a couple of key terms. First, we're going to review acids very briefly. Acids are substances that ionize to produce hydrogen ions, meaning when they're put into solution, the ions, the cation and the anion, break apart, and the cation is the hydrogen ion. Now, what you'll notice when you're looking at your textbook, a lot of the time we refer to hydrogen ions as protons. If you think about it, a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. And so if you have formed a hydrogen ion, what that means is you have removed that one electron, and all that's left is simply a proton. And so that's why we sometimes call hydrogen ions protons because they are, they're just one proton. Acids can be described as either monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic. Mono means one, di means two, tri means three, so that means how many protons or how many hydrogens can be released from the acid. So for example, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid because it can lose that first electron, and, it, and as you can see right here, when sulfuric acid loses that one proton, that one hydrogen ion, it produces that hydrogen ion and then also HSO4 with a negative one charge. Now that HSO4 can then lose another proton to become H plus and SO4 two minus. Now keep in mind, notice that the sulfuric acid has a single arrow in the right direction while the second one, for the second one, you have a double arrow. So what that means is that sulfuric acid is a strong electrolyte while the second one is a weak electrolyte, and we'll actually look at what that means in just one second in terms of acids. But we already studied strong and weak electrolytes previously. When we're talking about bases, bases produce hydroxide ions. So for example, magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, when it ionizes, it produces OH with a negative one charge when it dissolves in water. However, it also can accept hydrogen ions. And so for a base to be a base, it doesn't necessarily have to produce hydroxide ions. For example, when you have ammonia, ammonia can actually accept a hydrogen ion from water. Ammonia therefore acts as the base, producing ammonium, NH4+, and then hydroxide with a negative one charge. We will actually look at this definition of bases later, but it is important for you to remember that for a base to be a base, it does not necessarily have to have OH. What we're going to talk about right now is strong acids and strong bases. As you, look, as you saw in the previous slide, a strong acid is one that is a strong electrolyte. So sulfuric acid is one of your strong acids. Same thing with strong bases. They are strong electrolytes. So this list of strong acids includes HCl, HBr, HI, HClO3, HClO4, HNO3, and H2SO4. Those are all strong acids. And yes, that does matter, and yes, you do need to know that because that influences significantly your neutralization reaction. For strong bases, they include your group 1 metals with hydroxide and then also calcium, strontium, and barium. So what I want you to do right now, I want you to look at this diagram that I've provided you. You have HX, HY, HZ. These are all acids. I want you to rank these acids from strongest to weakest based on what you see, just to make sure you have a clear understanding of what exactly a strong acid is. This table summarizes the types of compounds that are strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. If you look at the strong electrolyte section, all ionic compounds are strong electrolytes, meaning that they dissociate into their ions. The other type of strong electrolyte are your strong acids. Those are the seven that we looked at on the previous slide. Weak electrolytes involve your weak acids and your weak bases. And your non-electrolytes are all the other molecular compounds that we looked at, for example, glucose, that do not dissociate completely and therefore exist as neutral compounds in addition to few ions. So let's actually look at an acid-base neutralization reaction. The general format includes an acid reacting with a base, and what it produces is a water and salt. So this example problem 
tells you that perchloric acid reacts with calcium hydroxide. So you've got your acid, which is perchloric acid, and you've got calcium hydroxide, which is your base. So perchloric acid and your calcium hydroxide. So keep in mind that what's going to be formed is a salt and then water. So I'm going to first write, my first product is going to be water. And then my second product is going to be, well, this is perchlorate. And this is calcium, so it's going to be calcium perchlorate. Because remember, perchlorate is one of your polyatomic ions. It has a negative charge, therefore it's written second. So the first thing that I need to do is write my molecular equation for this acid-base reaction. So perchloric acid, remember the formula for perchlorate is ClO4 with a negative one charge. So perchloric acid is HClO4. And it's going to react with calcium hydroxide, which is CaOH2 to produce water, which is just your H2O, and calcium perchlorate. So calcium has a two plus charge, perchlorate is negative one, so it would be CaClO4 two. All right, now I now have to write my complete ionic equation, complete ionic equation, which means I need to determine which of these compounds are soluble and which are insoluble. So perchloric acid is one of your strong acids, which means it's going to dissociate into its ions. So you've got H plus and you've got ClO4 with a negative charge. When you're looking at acids and bases, Remember that the only acids and bases that completely dissociate are those that are strong acids and those that are strong bases. In this example, perchloric acid is a strong acid and calcium hydroxide is also a strong base. So they are going to dissociate into their ions and they're going to form water this does not break into its ions, it's a molecular compound. And calcium perchlorate, this is a soluble compound. So it's going to dissolve into its ions. To form the following. So notice the difference between acid-base neutralization reactions and precipitation reactions when we're looking at the reactants, when we're looking at acid-base reactions, we have to consider the strength of the acids and the bases. If you have a weak acid or a weak base, then they will not dissociate into their ions, and therefore you cannot write them as their ions in the complete ionic equation. For the net ionic equation, I first need to determine what my spectator ions are. Well, hydrogen does not remain the same on both sides. Chlorate does remain the same on both sides. And what you should notice right now is I forgot to balance my equation. And that's, it's nice that I'm able to determine that when I'm trying to determine my spectator ions. I have one ClO4 here, I have two here. So what I need to do is I need to balance this by putting a two in front of perchloric acid. And then I need, because I have two hydrogens here, and I have two hydrogens here, which is a total of four. I need to put a two right here. So that would need a two right there. I have two hydrogen ions. I have two chlorate, perchlorate ions. And now I'm good. So my perchlorate ions will cancel because they are spectator ions and they are not directly involved in this reaction. Same with my calcium. And so my net ionic equation for this will be two hydrogen ions plus two hydroxide ions and it will produce two water molecules. If I want to include my states of matter here, my hydrogen ions are dissolved, so it's going to be 
aqueous. My hydroxide ions will also be aqueous. And water is a pure substance, is a compound. Therefore, it will be a liquid. In neutralization reactions, the base does not always have to have OH. And so in these two examples, you have sodium sulfide and sodium bicarbonate, which are acting as the bases, while you have hydrochloric acid as the typical acid that you would predict. Now, if you have an acid reacting with a sulfide, what happens is that it forms a gas, and those gases are not soluble. They have low solubility in the solution, and they produce extremely foul odors. So let's write out this reaction. Let's write out the molecular equation first. So you have hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. And it reacts with sodium sulfide. So the formula for sodium sulfide would be Na2S. And so what's going to be produced is eight hydrogen and sulfur are going to combine to create H2S and sodium chloride, Na. Cl. First thing I have to do quickly is balance. I have two sodiums on the left hand side so I need to put it two right here. And I have two hydrogens on the right so I need to put it two here and now I am balanced. Now I'm going to write the complete ionic equation. And remember I have to consider the strength of the acid in the base. And if it's not an obvious base, I have to consider solubility rules. So hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So I have two H pluses. And I have two chlorines, because it's a strong acid. Um, sodium sulfide is soluble, so it's going to break apart into its ions. This, as was mentioned before, it has low solubility, so hydrogen sulfide is going to remain as a compound. And then NaCl is going to break apart because it's soluble, so I have two Na pluses and two Cl minus. So the net ionic equation, I'm getting to the point, guys, at which I don't have to cross out my spectator ions. My net ionic equation is going to be two H plus, and this is going to be aqueous because it's dissolved in solution plus S2 minus which is also aqueous and it's going to produce hydrogen sulfide which is a gas. Okay. For the next one if a carbonate reacts with an acid it's going to form carbonic acid which is unstable and therefore it's going to decompose into water and carbon dioxide so let me show you what happens there. Okay. Keep in mind these are neutralization reactions because I have an acid and a base. So I have HCl again and it reacts with sodium bicarbonate. Remember bicarbonate is one of your polyatomic ions, has a formula of HCO3 with a negative one charge. So the formula for sodium bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate, it's also called, is NaHCO3. And it's going to react to form H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, hydrogen it's going to combine with HCO3, and then you also have NaCl. All right, so let's write out the complete ionic and then the net ionic equation. Okay, HCl, hold on one sec. Let's make sure I don't need to balance. I've got two H's here, two H's here, a Cl, a Cl, Na, Na, and I believe I am good. So. Hydrogen breaks apart into its ions because it's a strong acid. Sodium bicarbonate is soluble because you've got a group one metal right there. Okay, I've got hydrogen carbonate, which I'm going to deal with in just one second. And I've got Na and Cl. Remember that hydrogen Remember that carbonic acid is unstable, therefore it's going to break apart into H2O and CO2. And so when I am writing my net ionic equation, all that's left over is your hydrogen ion, your bicarbonate, and then water and CO2. 
So these are variations off of what we had talked about before with neutralization reactions. Just a couple more exceptions for you to keep in mind. Remember that the reason why they're neutralization reactions is because you have an acid reacting with a base.